Well, we thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to celebrate this ordinance that you gave so long ago and that it's lost none of its power from when you first instituted it 2,000 years ago there in Jerusalem. So please draw near to us as we open your word, draw near to us as we're about to partake of the communion, and would you be here to present them to us, the emblems of your own broken body and shed blood to us yourself, as we accept these things anew by faith, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, Matthew 26 again, the scripture reading. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it, number one. He broke it and gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, number two. And he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. When we partake in the communion service in a bit, you'll see, and you've known, those of you that have been through this before, that we have two elders that will come and join me. Each elder will offer a prayer, one on the, ble on the bread, asking for a blessing on the bread. The other will ask God's blessing on the cup, on the juice, or on the wine. Prayer was an integral part of the communion service. Jesus was the one who instituted it. Jesus was the one who gave us the example of praying for the bread, praying for the juice. And then there's another prayer that Jesus offers in the upper room before they go off to the Garden of Gethsemane that we'll look at as well. Three prayers, three communion prayers of Jesus that we're going to look at. If anyone could pray, Jesus could pray. There was a time when Jesus prayed, took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain, and as they were on top of the mountain, Jesus prayed, and Elijah and Moses came down and met with them there on top of the mountain. He prayed Elijah and Moses down. If anyone could pray, Jesus could pray. There was another time that Jesus prayed. He went up onto the top of a mountain, sent the disciples off in their boat across the Sea of Galilee to the other side, and when Jesus was done with his prayer time, he came down to the Waters of the Sea of Galilee, storm-tossed, white-capped billows, and he begins walking on top of the water to reach where his disciples were out in the middle of the sea. If anyone could pray, Jesus could pray. Another time in a garden, Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prays, agonizing prayer, and he prays down. An angel comes down from heaven to strengthen him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And another time Jesus prayed, he was at a tomb, the tomb of Lazarus, who had been in that tomb, buried for four days. Jesus comes to the tomb, and he prays at the tomb. And notice what he says. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, thank you for always hearing me when I pray. And for these people here, that they might believe, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. If anyone could pray, Jesus can pray. Things happen when Jesus prays. We can have confidence in the miraculous things that happen when Jesus prays. And the communion prayers of Jesus that he prayed back then are just as powerful today as we're about to partake in communion and participate in these prayers ourselves. The communion prayers. Number one, he blessed the bread. Number two, he gave thanks for the cup. And number three, that we'll see too, he prays for his followers there in the upper room before they left that night. Three components to the prayers of Jesus. First of all, he, he blessed the bread. Let's, let's look at this. What's significant about the fact that Jesus blessed the bread before he gives it to his disciples? Well, when he blessed the bread, he wasn't really intending to just bless the bread. The intent of blessing the bread is so that when his followers, his disciples, take the bread with the blessing of God upon it, and they would by faith receive it, understanding what it represented, and they internalize it by putting it into their mouth and swallowing it, that that blessing would be upon his people. He prays a blessing on the bread because he's praying that that blessing would be ours. 
that we would experience what that bread intended to remind us of, and that we would have it fresh and brand new in our, our Christian experience all over again, as if for the very first time, like it says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, when you accept the blessing that Jesus prayed on that bread and you receive it by faith, something miraculous happens. Christ Jesus is received into our lives in a brand new way. And if that happens, you're a brand new creation. You've been, you've been created anew. You're renewed. Old things are passed away. All things become brand new. It's a miracle. And it's just as important and powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus prayed over that bread and said, God, would you bless this so that when Peter and when Andrew and when Nathaniel and when Thomas, when these followers of mine, when they swallow this and they understand that this is, they're accepting by faith me into, my, into their life, they're accepting the life that I have lived and they're accepting it as their own. I'm giving them my righteousness. And they receive that brand new. It is theirs. That is the miracle that Jesus prays for that bread. When he prays, things happen. And that's our experience today. When we receive this bread by faith. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made him, God made Jesus, who knew no sin... That's the kind of life that he lived for us. He lived a sinless life, a totally righteous life. He was tempted in every way like we are, yet without sin. God then makes Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Do you see what we receive by faith when we take the bread that Jesus prayed over and Jesus blessed? And in a little bit, the elders are going to pray over. And Jesus, our high priest, prays alongside with that prayer. The very same prayer that 2,000 years ago he prayed on the bread, Jesus prays with our elder today. And that blessing is ours today. And we receive we become the righteousness of God by faith. When Jesus prays, miraculous things happen. That's the significance of the blessing upon the bread. Then he gave thanks. He gave thanks for the wine. What's so significant about him giving thanks for the wine? You know, thanksgiving is often an integral part of prayer. Like it says in... Um, uh, in Philippians 4, 6, in all things pray with supplication and thanksgiving. Jesus prays over the wine and he gives thanks for the wine so that whenever someone by faith drinks the wine, they are internalizing and accepting the fact that Jesus died in our place on the cross, that his blood was shed so that my blood does not have to be shed eternally, that Jesus is my representative there. He takes my punishment. He takes my death. And I accept the forgiveness that he offers when I accept this cup. That my sins are, are gone. My sins are forgiven. Jesus has died. He's received my penalty that I deserve. And he gives me his life that I do not deserve. But I choose to accept it by faith. Jesus' prayer is answered. When he said, thank you, Lord, for the... Put, I, I'm asking you, Lord, I'm giving thanks for this cup that my followers are about to drink. Thank you, God. I'm praying a prayer of thanksgiving so that I know when Lorne drinks that, his sins are forgiven. Thank you for doing that for him. Thank you for doing that for my brothers, my sisters here on earth. Thank you, God, that this is a miracle that you're providing for them. That's what it meant when he said he gave thanks for the wine. Thanks for the cup. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Do you believe that? Will you accept that anew by faith today? Will you receive brand new, a new start, a new beginning with Jesus? Will you accept anew today cleansing of your sins? 
You see, there's healing in the bread when we accept it by faith. That healing is the fact that Jesus renews us. There's healing when we accept the cup by faith today. That healing is the fact that the cup cleanses us from our sins. And every time we take communion, like we're about to today, we are reminded of the fact that Jesus himself is still praying for us. Our high priest before the throne of God is well aware of what's happening right here over the Zoom airwaves, over the, the, the microphone system here at the Cedar Rapids Church. He is still praying for us. The prayer over the bread and the prayer over the wine. Jesus, our high priest, is still adding this miraculous gift that he wants us to have anew again today. Now it brings us to the third prayer. Before they left the upper room, before they ended that communion service there to go to the Garden of Gethsemane, it's recorded in John chapter 17. Wonderful prayer that Jesus prays. And in his prayer, Jesus says, at the communion service, he says, you know what, I'm not praying for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. He was even praying for those who were not yet in attendance with his followers. They were not there with them yet, but he knew that there were going to be a lot of people that were going to accept the, the blessing of the cup and the blessing of the bread someday down the road because his individuals who had participated in communion and received these things by faith were going to be used by God to share that blessing with others. He says, I'm not praying for them alone. I'm praying for those that are still out there that are going to receive their word I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Jesus still prays that prayer today at the communion service, not just to bless the bread, not just to bless the wine, but to bless his followers as they are about to go out into the world that God's work would continue to go forward. And we become like it said in 2 Corinthians. Where, where we read earlier when we were looking at the bread, remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all those that are in Christ uh, are new creation. Old things are passed away, all things become new. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, where it said that God made Jesus to be sin for us and he Jesus takes our sins and gives us his righteousness. In between those two verses, it says this, and it's the very same, same thought as the third prayer at the communion service. Now, God has reconciled us to himself. As a result of the communion service today, all those of us who accept these things by faith and new today, we are reconciled to him, to God, through Jesus Christ. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. Wow! You see why I started with this by saying when Jesus prays, things happen. When Jesus prays, miraculous things happen. That's not just an ordinary piece of bread that we take by, by faith. That's not just an ordinary cup of juice that we, we drink. And when we go out with the assurance that God has done these things for us, God says, I am going to use you now. We're ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us to other people. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So there are three prayers at the communion service, three steps that take place today when we do communion. Step one, we're blessed by the bread. Step two, we experience the cleansing from the cup. And step three, we have a work or a ministry to do. He prays, continues praying in John 17, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world 
that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He wants us to experience this joy. What is the joy that he wants us to experience? As you sent me, I also have sent them. I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified. I do not pray for these alone, but for those who will believe in me through their word. He wants us to know the joy of ministry, the joy of service, the joy of being used by God by sharing with someone else what Jesus has done for us and seeing the joy of them saying, I want that too. And then seeing the joy of them when they accept it by faith that they too now have a joy that they want to share with somebody else. And it continues to go on and it's been going on for the last 2,000 years and the work is not done yet. We're still doing the communion service today. These spiritual realities are still taking place today. Jesus, our high priest, is still praying with us that this miraculous things would happen when we take the bread. Miraculous things would happen when we drink the juice and miraculous things would happen when we leave the church to go back out into the community. Jesus wants to bless us today so that we become a blessing to someone else. So in review, the communion prayer, he blessed the bread, his life is given to us. The healing of the bread that we receive by faith is that we are renewed in our lives today. The thanks that he gives for the wine, that we receive that by faith today, his death is given to us in a brand new way today. And the healing of the wine is that we are cleansed from our sins. The past is in the past. We don't have to be burdened down with it anymore. We have a new beginning today as we press on to the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And that leads us to the third prayer. He prays for his followers. He gives us his work. And he gives us the healing of ministry. The healing as we get involved in service for others. The healing of, of letting God use us to encourage someone else. And that healing of ministry is the healing of strength and encouragement. As we see God working for other people. Which brings me to this close here before I wrap up. I want us to remember the, the new commitment that we're making today to Jesus. If you would like to have a new life in Jesus again today, accept the bread. If you would like to have a new beginning and the past is in the past and you're forgiven and cleansed and, and renewed in Jesus today, then accept the cup Think about these things. Receive them by faith. Understand what is happening miraculously by grace from the throne of God to the, to the very seat that you're sitting in this morning. Jesus provides these spiritual realities to us this morning. We at the Seventh-day Adventist Church... We celebrate what we call open communion. You do not have to be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to participate in the communion service today. But we do ask one thing. If you're a visitor here this morning, if there's someone visiting at, at a member's house on the Zoom this morning, and you're wondering, well, I don't know, should I participate in communion? I'm not a member. Yes, please do. If you would like to receive by faith the, the broken body of Jesus and accept his righteousness. If you would like to receive by faith the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins, by all means participate with us in the communion service this morning. Commit your life to Jesus. You know he's already committed his life to you. There would be no, no broken body. There would be no shed blood if he was not already committed to you. Commit your life anew to him. This morning, there was a lady, her name is Connie. Before we left Gladstone, before we left Kansas City and the Gladstone Church where I pastored, Connie was a member of the Gladstone Church. From the time I knew her, and, uh, and I, I'm sure none of you know her, but I'm guessing Tom and uh, Tom, Tom you, you and your wife might, have, might know who, who Connie Arenza is. Um, so Tom and Ingrid, Connie Arenza is the person that I'm referring to right now. She, when I got to know her just a few years, she has um, 
uh, renal failure, kidneys were shutting down. And then alongside with that, um, congestive heart failure. She was often swelling up with the fluid and she had been through kidney dialysis for so many years, for so long, that she was eventually, her body was just shutting down. And there wasn't a whole lot more that the doctors and the nurses were saying that they could do for Connie. And this was just last fall. I'm going to say like maybe September. I would go and visit with her in the hospital. They were putting her in and out of the hospital, sending her home. She would go for dialysis and she'd end up back in the hospital. And one day I was visiting with Connie in the hospital. And, um, and, and she's encouraging me. She's talking faith to me. I didn't have to say a whole lot to try to encourage her. She knew that the end was getting closer. But she was saying over and over, she would say, the devil's not going to win with me. I know I'm, so, I'm too close to the finish line now. I'm not going to give up on Jesus now. Jesus is still with me, and he can still heal me if he wants to. And I'm going to trust him to the very end. And by the time I got to where I was to leave, and I had prayer with her, I said something to Connie, something like this. I said, Connie, you know... I appreciate so much the fact that you are clinging to a strong faith in Jesus Christ. <laughs> and Connie looked at me and she said, oh, no, no. She says, you go back and you tell my, my friends at the Gladstone Church, she said, you go back and tell them, don't hold on to faith. Don't keep the faith. And I said, what do you mean, Connie? And she said, tell them don't keep the faith. Tell them to share it with someone else. And that's why I put that little saying at the body. She told that to me. And I said, Connie, I like that. That is so good. I said, I'm going to use that, Connie. I'm going to share that. And I'm going to give you credit for it. Don't keep the faith. Share it with someone else. Because Connie knew there was strength in ministry. She knew there was encouragement in ministry. She knew the, the blessing of the third part of the prayer, the communion prayer of Jesus. She knew by faith the broken body of Jesus, his life was hers. She knew by faith that the shed blood of Jesus, his forgiveness was hers. And she knew by faith that she participated still, even on her deathbed, that, that, that there was healing and strength and encouragement that came as a result of ministry and service. And Connie has since died since then, but she's looking forward to the second coming of Jesus. So remember these things as we partake in the communion service today. I'm going to ask if the elders would come and join me up here on the platform. And in just a, now this is a little bit different the way we're doing it today, but uh, you understand that uh, there's extenuating circumstances as to why we're doing it this way. In just a bit, uh, one of the elders is going to ask the blessing on the bread. That'll be the first prayer. The prayer for the, for the bread, knowing that Jesus himself is intercepting that prayer and Jesus himself is presenting it before the Father. God, make this a miraculous experience for my people at the Cedar Rapids Church today. Next, the, the elder will then... Um, uh, the, well, first of all, the elder will have the reading on the, the scripture on the bread. He will pray the blessing on the bread and then the elder will say, the moment will come, take and eat. Be careful when you open your package. He'll say, take and eat. Then the next elder will come up and he will do the same thing. He'll repeat the same process. Read the scripture on the wine. Have the blessing on the wine. Ask you to take and drink. And then we'll bind off the service this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24 says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are the bread of life and that you offer up your body, your complete self for us so that we might be nourished and strengthened, that we might take this emblem and make it a reality, that you live in us and through us, that you provide for us all that we need because of your sacrifice on the cross for us. We are amazed, Father, and grateful for your tremendous gift for us. And we ask your blessing now 
as we partake of this bread. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 25. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he uh, had supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Kadusenge. My mother, I am true to the name of the Lord, 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 the Muzajya mubikora kugira ngo munyibuke uyu munsi duteranijwe no kugira ngo twibuke aya maraso y'isezerano kandi twiringiye tudashidikanya ko uwo wadusigiye iryo sezerano turi kumwe nawe muri uyu muhango ibyo dukora byose tukaba tukwingingiye kugira ngo ukeburire imitima yacu kwiringira isezerano kandi ko iryo sezerano ari ryo rizaducongora nuko rero mwami wacu ubane natwe Udukomereze isezerano rishya tugiranye na uyu munsi mu izina rya Yesu amen So Jesus said take and drink this is my blood which is heard for you do this in remembrance of me please take it The wafer that we took and the juice that we drank, aren't you glad that they are symbolic? And they are symbolic of things that are very, very special. Much more special than what that wafer was like and what that little bit of juice was like. And that by faith, the specialness of these symbols, Jesus applies to our account now. And we have it. If anyone's in Christ, you're a new creation. Old things are passed away, and we have a brand new beginning right now. Well, the way we're going to close off <clears throat> our service today is like the way they did at the very first communion service as well. It says when they came to the end of that third prayer that Jesus prayed, they sang a hymn together, and that was it. They walked out. They sang a hymn together, and they departed. They sang a hymn together, and that hymn was the closing prayer. So we're going to do the same. And, but I want you to notice that the hymn we're going to sing is a distinctive Seventh-day Adventist hymn. It's a hymn that points us... Now, we, we've already looked backward to the cross. It's time to po be pointed forward now to the cloud. Because Jesus said that he would no longer drink of the fruit of this vine until he does it with us new someday in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. He points us forward at the communion service to remind us there's going to come a day when we're going to drink juice together in heaven with Jesus in reality. So let's, let's sing this Adventist hymn. We have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord. I'm going to ask our song leaders to come. We're going to sing this song a cappella. If you would please stand, we'll sing this without musical accompaniment. And then when this song is over, we will depart. This is our closing prayer as well. We have this hope that burns within our heart. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts. Faith in the promise of His word. We believe the time is here 
when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing hallelujah christ is king we have this hope that burns within our heart hope in the coming of the lord god bless and have a great sabbath